All right, Scott, we're recording. I'll turn it over to you. Okay. All right, good evening, everybody. I apologize. You, you may be hearing a chocolate lab barking in the background, so hopefully he'll uh, behave himself. Anyway, um, I just want to welcome everybody to the um, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for the Town of Rhinebeck meeting uh, of January 19th, 2022. And um, before I start on the agenda, I have to read um, something so we can conduct this uh, virtually. So here goes. Uh, this meeting is being held virtually pursuant to New York State legislation under New York State Senate Bills uh, S-5001 and New York State Assembly Bill A-4001, which has uh, extended virtual access to public uh, meetings held pursuant to New York State's open meetings law. Uh, this legislation allows uh, this ZBA to meet uh, the CBA meeting to be held remotely and allows the public to uh, virtually participate. Uh, originally, the, uh, the section, these sections of the law uh, went um, until uh, January 15th, uh, 2022, but they were just recently extended it until February 14th, uh, 2022. So uh, the legislation um, is in effect and allows us to do that. All right, uh, with that said, uh, I'll do a roll call. Uh, Catherine Clark? Here. Uh, Tim Allenbrook? Here. Richard? Here. All right. Uh, Tim Economopoli? Here. All right, we're all present. Scott Bergen present. <laughs> all right. Um, did everybody get a chance to take a look at the meeting minutes? Um, I reviewed them. I didn't see anything. Uh, I didn't notice any uh, errors or, or needs for corrections, but how about the rest of the gang? Anybody have any uh, questions, concerns, or corrections? Uh, oh, regarding... They look pretty good. They look pretty yeah. good to me as well. Yep. Yeah, and and I'm referring, by the way, to the uh, virtual meeting minutes, um, uh, or the, the meeting minutes for the virtual meeting held on December fifteenth, twenty twenty one. Correct. All right. Uh, not hearing any uh, questions, concerns, uh, or. Um, uh, corrections. I'll make a motion that we accept the meeting minutes as presented uh, for the virtual meeting of December 15th, 2021. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All right. <laughs> um, all in favor, aye. 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 All right. Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, let's see. The first order of business. Uh, is the uh, new case of uh, T Court case number 1024. And I see Mark is here for that. Uh, Mark, yes. you're, not a, you're not a rookie, so you know what to do. Okay. Uh, just lead us through what you want to do. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, assuming that there's enough information, uh, we'll accept the application and set it up for a public hearing. And that public hearing, by the way, I believe is. I want to say the 18th February, 16th of February. So 16th of February. anyway, okay. Take, take it away. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Mark Verminsky. I'm representing uh, T Court LLC. Um, the property is located at 195 River Road. Um, <clears throat> the total parcel size is a little more than 55 acres. And <clears throat> um, uh, Prior to this meeting, I had, um, you know, my office had prepared, um, you know, a, a PDF, you know, a, a PowerPoint, so to speak, uh, to take uh, to take this board uh, through this specific application. But I just wanted to um, <clears throat> give the board some information about the project before we start that. And so, uh, I have been uh, working uh, on. T Court LLC and, and some adjoining properties uh, for several years. And um, this specific application is being made to the uh, Town Zoning Board of Appeals for uh, two area variance applications. Uh, one for an accessory structure greater than 20 feet. And then also, and so that's 125.27A1. And then also, uh, for area variance consideration for um, accessory structures in front of the principal dwelling. And so the way that um, uh, we came to this board 
was it's it's been a process for uh, actually a couple of years that has uh, we've had multiple meetings and uh, discussions with the town planning board and ultimately um, we went the, last year in 2021 we went through a master plan uh, application for not only this property but two adjoining properties one um, uh, <clears throat> one to one to, well actually I'll say two properties to the south. Uh, those are identified as Astor Courts and Brindle Valley uh, LLC. And so um, in working with the town planning board and, and also its uh, consultants developed a, a master plan uh, for all three of the properties. And so, um, and so for this application that the ZBA is that we're gonna present this evening, there's also a subsequent application uh, to the town planning board uh, for this, for uh, the planning board's consideration of site plan and special permit. And so this particular part of our, and, and we've made various applications and they're all in, uh, you know, they all have been outlined in, in various ways uh, through the master plan document. And so now uh, our, our, um, our, you know, the owner uh, and the applicant are, um, you know, proceeding with you know various um, various applications that have been outlined, as I said in the master plan, in a phased in a phased approach, and so this this particular one for the ZBA is is actually phase three of the master plan, and I try to include you know as much information uh, for the ZBA uh, without uh, burdening burdening them with too with too much information. Um, and so also uh, on, this, uh, on this Zoom meeting uh, with me this evening are, are the other consultants that are involved um, with this project. And so it's uh, Howard Williams is, is on and he is the landscape architect for the project and um, he is with Hollander Associates. And then the uh, project architects are, are, are also on and that's uh, Cynthia uh, Phil Koff and Armand DiBias. And um, so I think what I'd like to do, Jim, is if we could, and, and I'll just give the, the ZBA, you know, the board, a brief overview of what I prepared for, you know, slides to take a look at. It's just, you know, defining, um, you know, the location of this particular application, and then getting into some of the details, uh, you know, specific to, to, to the you know to the uh, area variance applications, and then I've also provided um, some uh, images, both plans, um, you know, arch architectural uh, elevations and architectural renderings associated um, with the various um, structures that are being considered, and uh, ultimately you know part part of the application. So Jim, if you could start with um, the first sheet. So this is, and I went to PDF. So Jim, maybe if you could zoom in a little bit where I have where I have the rectangular boxes. Absolutely. Well, I'll start with this first. It's th this. This is an overall plan that actually um, it it actually includes all three of the parcels that I just mentioned, and so. Um, these, the rectangular boxes that are shown here. And so and just for orientation, Hudson River is on the left side or the west side of the drawing. That's where Jim's um, uh, moving the cursor. And then on the, on the right side, uh, it's ultimately River Road. And so there's a, in, in this particular case, there's you know, access uh, via a driveway from River Road. It actually uh, passes uh, alongside Ferncliff Nursing Home and actually uh, where Jim's uh, uh, moving the cursor, that's the nursing home right there. It's on the, it's on the east side of that uh, lower left-hand uh, rectangle. And so, um, I, so I'm starting with this. This is kind of a, and, and just, uh, this is just a, you know, a, a, like an overall plan uh, of, the, um, of, of the structures that are being considered uh, for this application. So I'm gonna start on the west side and then I'm gonna go clockwise. So where that larger rectangle is, um, 
and, and once again, just reminding the, the ZBA that this is, and these, these plans have also been submitted to the planning board. So there's, uh, there's you know, there's, um, you know, more detail uh, associated, you know, with the drawing that is, is you know, it's, it's pertinent to the planning board application. But just including it, uh, I just included all that information uh, to this board. So in the, and so in this rectangle, there's a small structure that's located uh, to the to the west of the uh, residence, and it is um, it is a uh, it's actually a treehouse. And so, uh, in in working with the zoning administrator um, uh, Michael Trimble, um, you know, obviously there's some code that has been written that allows treehouses in the town of Rhinebeck. But in this particular case, uh, felt that it was uh, it would be more appropriate to handle uh, this uh, particular structure as an accessory structure, uh, just due to the nature of its, of its construction and the fact that it has some utilities associated with it. So, uh, the, so this this first structure that uh, that I was going to discuss is the treehouse, and so. Um, but Jim, if you could go to the if you could go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> Can you get to the next one, Jim? Yeah, it didn't it didn't go through. It should have rendered. You're still on the same one. Still on the same one. Hmm. Oh, I'm I'm seeing the next one. Yeah, same here. Not me. Yeah, not me. Well, that's, that's interesting. That's strange. <laughs> let me uh, let me just, oh. let's just start it again. Okay. Never had that happen before. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing two of twenty seven. Um, Did it come up, Mark? No. Uh, yeah, so yes, it did. Now it came up. So if you uh, zoom into that, that upper one, yeah, the, the larger rectangle there. Mm -hmm. you, you can see that. So, so there's a circle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right there. Yeah. And so that is the location of the treehouse. And, um, and so there are uh, some plans that were developed in association with the treehouse. And so this particular area, uh, area variance being requested is for height. Um, and so uh, right now this, this structure was attached to a tree, or actually multiple trees. And um, it's, uh, it has a platform and the platform at the, at the east end of it is approximately um, 16 feet um, uh, above the ground surface. And then the platform on the westerly side is about 20 feet um, from, from the ground surface. And then when you consider uh, the, height, you know, the height of the structure and the type of the structure, Jim, you could actually go to the next slide, please. Hey, Mark, can I ask you a question? Sure. Is this the old Astor Playhouse? That we're looking at. No, it's, uh, no, it's not. Oh well, it's okay. the, the well. It's 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 the T court. So when you say playhouse, could you be more specific? Or, uh, and, it, and it actually, if Howard or uh, Cynthia or Armand, uh, please jump in if you just help me with the playhouse. If there if there was a certain structure that was defined as playhouse, I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, it was the Astor Playhouse is where the Clintons got married and. Yeah, that, that actually is the Astor Courts building. That's further to the south of this. It's actually a separate parcel. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so, Jim, can you go to the next slide? I think so. Next slide should have some details for the treehouse. Uh, so right there. Here we go. Okay. And so I, I have a few slides for the treehouse. So now you can oh. see. These, these are engineered drawings that, that were developed by Murray Engineering uh, for the treehouse. And so there's a series of three, I believe. 
And so um, you can see that, um, you know, if you, if you look at this, you know, there's a few sections that are shown for the, uh, for the tree house and it shows, you know, an elevated structure attached to two trees and elevated above the ground surface. Um, uh, so next, next one, please. Just some more details uh, relative to the uh, tree house. And then uh, the next one, please. And this kind of gives you a visual. Uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this is how it exists right now. So you can see, um, you know, it's attached to two trees. One is going right through the structure. Um, and then there's, a, there's a, a porch on the west side of it. There's a tree going through that also. And then you can see a walkway on the, on, the, uh, on the east side or to the left of that uh, photograph where, where it walks down uh, to existing grade. And then there are some, um, there's some lawn steps uh, that, that you know, go up to the, uh, near the, near the residence. Um, so this, you know, this proposal in front of the planning board is to, um, there's, there's gonna be a permanent walkway that's, that's gonna go all the way towards the house. Um, and, but this, this application to the ZBA is just for height. And so when you consider uh, from the existing ground surface to, you know, because of the type of the structure, it's the, it's the midpoint, midpoint between the peak and the eaves. Um, it's, it's, it, it varies between uh, 28 to 30 feet in height uh, from the existing ground surface. So that's the, um, that's the first area of variance uh, that is, uh, that's, that's being, that we're speaking about and, and asking for consideration. Um, so, uh, Jim, if you could go to the uh, next slide, please. So once again, I'm back to, I'm using this, I'll, I'll always go back to this drawing. It's kind of, it, you know, it's details that we have prepared uh, for, um, you know, for the application. And I'll, I'll just keep going back to this drawing just to try to uh, help orient uh, the board as to, um, you know, where we are relative to the property. So now we're going to go to the, the ellipse. Uh, as I said, we're going to go in a clockwise manner. So on that uh, upper uh, rectangle, Jim, if you could zoom into that ellipse a little bit, please. Right, and so this is, uh, so this is our uh, second area of variance that we're requesting. And I'll just say the balance of the area of variances being requested are for location of accessory structures um, within the front yard of the principal dwelling. So that's, that is uh, uh, 125, 27, A4, I believe. And so uh, there is a, uh, there's an existing uh, guest cottage at this location. Um, you see it's on the left side of the, uh, the ellipse, and then what's being proposed is a mudroom and garage addition, and so that will be to the east of it. And um, and you know, and it, there's uh, obviously a network of you know uh, existing uh, driveways, uh, gravel driveways that uh, <laughs> that are through the property, and uh, and and it provides you know access um, to this structure. But, you know, and just and obviously with the you know, addition of the, uh, of the it's a three bay garage, uh, some minor, um, you know, site works uh, associated with that, which is, which that specific application is being considered by the planning board. Uh, next slide, please, Jim. So this is, uh, so this is a, um, this is a drawing prepared by Hollander Associates. This shows the, I just wanted to give the board a visual of the existing cottage. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is um, an elevation uh, prepared by uh, DBS Philkoff uh, showing the a cottage, uh, the mudroom uh, connection uh, to, the, um, to the proposed three bay garage. Uh, next slide, please. Same, uh, another, uh, this is an east elevation view. Next, next slide, Jim, please, thank you. Uh, south elevation. 
Next slide, please. And west elevation. Uh, next slide, please. And so here's a, um, a render drawing, uh, show, you know, which um, uh, um, shows the, obviously the existing cottage on the, on the left side of this uh, rendering, and then the mudroom addition along with uh, the three bay garage. And please, if anyone has questions as I'm going through this, stop me. I was just trying to, uh, you know, uh, get, you know, just take you through, um, you know, the the entire application, and then if, and also if you have obviously any questions at the end, uh, happy to go back uh, through these. Yeah, Mark, this, just a quick question on the garage um, above it. What is, is just storage? Yes, there is on the, on the, the yes, second there, floor, so to speak. Yes, and so uh, one thing that I, I probably should have brought up in the beginning is on the on the base drawings that were submitted uh, to the planning board and also to the ZBA, um, I, I actually outlined all the floor areas uh, for the um, all the existing uh, existing accessory and proposed accessory structures um, on the property, and that included. And then I I further um, detailed which were roofed accessory structures and which were not roofed which were non-roofed accessory structures. So all that information is on the, is on the site plan. So, you know, obviously we, you know, when, when you have a, a, a property like this with multiple accessory structures, also took a look at to, to ensure that our, our total floor area was not greater than what was allowed. And so we are, un, we are under um, the allowable uh, floor area for accessory structures. It's a little bit different uh, zoning district. It's not the standard 1500 square feet um, uh, because it's uh, in, in this zoning district, it's based on a total parcel area and you're allowed 300 square feet um, uh, per acre of the, you know, er, and portion thereof uh, for, for this particular parcel. And as I mentioned in the beginning, it's about 55, a little more than 55 acres. So we are under the allowable floor area. And I detailed that on my plans. Uh, on, there's, there's two tables uh, that are located on, on, um, on my site plan. Uh, uh, next, Mark, Mark? Yeah, go ahead. I, uh, 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 first, when you showed the cottage, you said it was the original cottage, and then you, but then you said it was a drawing. Is that what the cottage looks like now? Yeah, it, it's, the, the cottage exists, uh, Richard. So, Is that what it looks like? Um, yes. Okay, thanks. Is, is the garage bigger than the house, than the cottage? Yes. <clears throat> Big garage. Yeah, I, I might add, um, uh, some of the reasoning for a three-bay garage in this location is um, the tea house um, original building is a very small house relative to the size of the property. It was, you know, it was originally just a, you know, truly a tea house that has been expanded over um, a, a number of decades since its, its original construction. And it only has two, um, two bays of garage in it. Um, now for, for this particular client, he has more than two vehicles and mm -hmm. uh, it seemed more, like it's more reasonable to add on uh, or a garage to this structure than to add on to the T court building itself. So, so that's one reason why the, the garage uh, in this particular um, uh, building seems larger than the original structure. Yeah. It's, it's really just a guest house, but it's serving the, the, the main house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if there's no other questions, the next, next slide, please. So we're we're now back. Can hear you. Yeah, Ar Armin Armin de Biaz was trying to say something. It looked like. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see. I didn't hear it. I can't hear him, but his lips are moving. He's trying to say something. I don't know what he's saying. 
Cynthia, can he you, has to undo. Can you offer he, any he, help, Cynthia? He's, un, he's unmuted. He's he's coming in to, next to me. I'm in the other room. <laughs> you weren't muted, but the audio was. This is uh, Armand and Cynthia, the architects. I just want to clarify that there is a little change on fenestration at the uh, the guest house. There's a garage door that's being removed and being replaced with windows. Right, so if you go back to that other um, rendering, you can see it before as it currently is. So one more back, please. Right, so that that is how it exists now. And it, it's a kind of unusual condition where there was a garage door that um, only exists on the exterior, it doesn't <clears throat> exist on the <throat> interior. That's a solid wall. So we're removing that garage door and adding two windows there and then using that um, aesthetic for the new garage doors. That would be no change to the, uh, the massing on the floor right. of the existing building, just some change to the uh, fenestration. <clears throat> okay. Ready to move forward, everyone? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, next slide, please. So remember, I was uh, I was uh, moving uh, a clock. Uh, I was going clockwise, but so we're now going to go to the the drawing where Jim has the, uh, so that's the, the rectangle on the, on the left side, lower left, right. And so, and maybe if you hold it right there for a second, Jim, that might be helpful. So associated um, with this project is, um, you know what, I'll let Howard, uh, Howard, if you could just, just uh, um, bring the, just a brief discussion about the train. Um, yes, um, this, this is the perhaps the most unusual and unique feature uh, proposed on the property. Um, uh, this is a, um, a, a miniature train. Uh, when we say miniature, it's, um, it's a rideable but very small train with um, tracks that actually are only about seven inches apart from each other and, and train cars that are only about 18 inches tall. Um, but they uh, uh, um, th this is the kind of thing that is, um, uh, there are some interesting clubs around the country with, with people who are uh, in, into, into studying the, the history of trains through making these miniatures. Um, it's, it's proposed on this property in part because Vincent Astor, um, who was the last Astor to, to, to live on the estate, had such a train himself. And um, the uh, location in this, this oval here, was where he had the, the uh, was the sort of, I guess you'd call it the southern loop of his train station train, and it ran north up into uh, our, our northern neighbor's property. Um, uh, you can see on this drawing is there's a property line with a couple of loops on it. So um, we only own a small portion of where Vincent had his train. So um, we're actually extending our, our train east and west, whereas he, ran it up north. Um, so to service the, that train, um, since some of these are going to be um, steam operated engines, they do require um, uh, you know, in interior storage uh, as well as shops to, to maintain them. So these will be small buildings that function as um, a, a roundhouse and car barn. So the roundhouse is, is the arc structure for, uh, for servicing the train engines. Um, to, to the right, there's a easy steaming base where they will actually have to fire up to, to become operable. Uh, and then the long bar where actually it says roundhouse is, is, is truly the car barn. So the, the train cars that the engines pull will be stored in that. Uh, and then just, just north of that um, is a small station house um, for uh, awaiting passengers. There also the um, our, our, our client is very interested in the history of, of, of Astor Courts, um, and particularly how Vincent Astor's train, as well as some real actual uh, commercial trains ran through the property. 
Um, there was the Huckleberry line to the south and then the, the Hudson River lines you know, you know, on the west side along the river. Um, so this station is going to, to um, care, act as a small museum for some of the memorabilia that we have uh, inherited um, in the purchase of the property that, that are relative to the train. Okay, um, so uh, if Jim, if you could, uh, thank you, Howard. Um, if you could go to the uh, next slide, please, Jim. Um, so obviously here, and uh, so these, and uh, Armand and Cynthia, please feel free to comment on these. Uh, these are uh, various elevations of the, the roundhouse, the car barn, and then ultimately we'll get to the uh, station house also. So um, just so, maybe, uh, um, take, take us through these. It might be a little easier to look at the renderings because it's difficult to um, understand the curve in two dimensions. So, okay, so Jim, if you could keep going, I think that, that really you helps it. you understand. Um, so, so can I ask a, a question, quick question? If the, if the trains, if those tracks are only about seven inches apart and the train is only about 18 inches tall, does the scale seem totally off here? These buildings are people-sized buildings? from where you showed the truck and the, and the people standing in them? Yeah, I think that's a rendering um, uh, the matter. The trains, the trains in this rendering are, are larger than what they, they truly will be. Um, and we'll have to, uh, to address that. Um, but, but the structures are real people-sized the, structures. The structures are true, yes, yes. You can see the benches inside the, uh, the pass-through there. The, that's actual. Right, Next, you know, okay. Scale. But, but so on that one too, I mean, I was just surprised when you said the trains were so small on that re rendering of the station, the train is also much larger than it will, will be. Is that right? The, the tracks are, I believe, 16 inches apart. Oh, 16. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, uh, they, they actually are seven and one quarter inches apart. That, so that might be a miscommunication on, on our part. And, and we'll have the, you, the drawings uh, corrected. Would you like and to I won't, I won't the belabor this all, but it, it, in, in looking at some of the historical fo photos of Vincent Astor, I think there was one of him sitting on one of these trains. Is mm -hmm. it possible to ride on it? Yes, yes it is possible. We, okay. have, we, have, we have a video of him riding on it. Okay, thank you. I, yeah. I mean, I don't think my questions are really germane to what we're trying to do here. It was more my own curiosity. Mm -hmm. Catherine, this is Jim. I, I actually had the same question and, and Mark and, and Howard and others, you know, we'll, we'll get into that for the planning board, but that was one of the questions I had was just the scale. Um, and if that had changed, cause that was, that was the discussion at the planning board level in terms of the size of the track and, and disturbance area. But yeah, Catherine, I don't think mm -hmm. that um, pertains to the applications in front of you today. Yeah. Thank you though for that clarification. Yep. Okay. Um, and just maybe take, so this is the, um, um, the roundhouse and car barn. Uh, next slide, please, Jim. And then uh, station house, I guess we can go through these and get right to the rendering. There's the station house. And then I believe there's two renderings of the station house. All right. So I just, I just, I just want to keep moving through with just and anyone has questions, please stop me. Um, and then uh, fi uh, finally, we'll go on uh, the third uh, rectangle. And so uh, this is a location. There's, uh, there's an existing maintenance barn uh, that's, that's located uh, on the property. And so uh, this proposal uh, is there's an, there's an addition being proposed. Um, to that maintenance barn. So where Jim was just had the cursor, that's the existing barn right there. And then where the where the ellipse is, that's the that's the proposed maintenance barn. And there's some storage bins associated with that also. Um, and so next slide, please, Jim. Um, this went to a Hollander drawing, which on the left side of the drawing, it shows uh, loca uh, location, Th these are details relative to uh, the proposed 
uh, maintenance building and storage bins, uh, new access associated with it. Upper left, you can see just the corner of the existing barn. And then obviously maintenance building, I should say. And then, um, and then that uh, photograph uh, on the uh, lower right uh, portion of the drawing, that is the existing uh, maintenance building. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, we'll just take you through these elevations quickly because we have some renderings. Uh, next, next slide. Hey Mark, Mark, yes. What what's upstairs? Anything upstairs or? Um, Storage <clears throat> is upstairs. Storage. Mm -hmm. okay. Are there any bathrooms in this structure? No. But uh, no. No. Okay. Um, so here's here's one um, rendering of the. Uh, of the barn, you can see the barn uh, on the left side of this rendering and on the right side, you, you get a look at the storage bins. And actually, if you go to the next slide, Jim, it, it'll show another, there are the storage bins. Mm -hmm. Keep, you can go to the next slide, please. And here's uh, another perspective of the, of the new storage barn and, and the uh, storage bins associated with it. <clears throat> so I, th I think that takes us through, um, that's the last slide, correct, Jim? Yes, it is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so this takes, so I'll just do a quick summary. Um, and uh, so it's, it, you know, uh, just simplifying the application. It's, you know, application for area variance for height, for the uh, for the uh, for the treehouse, and then uh, application for um, area variances for uh, multiple for the um, accessory structures located in the front yard of the principal residence. And so, where Jim's got has the cursor, he's moving. That's where the principal residence is. That's the that's the tea house. So all those other structures, you know, the guest cottage with the with the mud room in the garage. And then the, the buildings associated um, with, the, with the train, and then also the, the new addition to the maintenance building, all those structures are located in the front yard. And so um, that's in summary, that's, that's the application in front of this board. So uh, one, um, one height uh, uh, area variance, and then, um, then the balance of the accessory structures are for uh, being in the front yard of the principal residence. So is there a variance request for each of those structures then, I guess? Yes, it is for each each one of those. All, all those structures are uh, in, included in, in the request. Yeah, uh, Mark, you said you said the um, the tree house was going to have an elevated walkway. <clears throat> or maybe yes. I misunderstood that. Is there a rendering of that? Yeah, if we go back to, uh, back one more slide, please, Jim. Oh, is there a rendering? No, we have we have an elevation of it. If you could go, yeah, uh, one more, uh, Jim. Right there. If you look in the lower right, you see it's broken. Um, yeah. You know, it's that north elevation. It's right there. So there's, you know, if you went back to the, to the existing photograph, you can see it's just steps going. There, there's a, there's a, right. yeah, there, there's, there's a, a walkway down and then it goes to some lawn steps. Yeah, exactly. And so now it's just, it's gonna be a walkway all the way, um, you know, towards the existing residence. So now, it, it would go straight out from the tree house? Correct. Yeah. Mark, when was the tree house built? Oh gosh! Someone help me on that one. It's uh, well, it was it was built by the previous owner, yeah, uh, Robert right. Duffy. So this is something that we inherited with right. the purchase of the property. So we don't know exactly the date, but it was prior to um, eight years ago. What was there a, a, originally an, a, a permit for it? We don't know. There was not. No, That's why we're before there you. There wasn't. So so there's some history with that. So we've we've been working with the town. Uh, building department, zoning department, and planning board to lead the structure. And so uh, this application to the ZBA 
is is part of that to to make this a legal structure. Right. All right. Any questions? Ed, I'm still on the elevated walkway. Um, where does that end up on the property? So it's there's a. Um, I didn't include those drawings. Um, so on the on the west side of the existing residence, there's there's a series of patios, and so it's and so th this is. Let's see if we can. Yeah, great. Yeah, there we go. Right, and so you can so 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 looking at the contours, right? So you can see where. Uh, so it's it's to the it's between where it says. PS and SF on that drawing. So that S is a designation for silt fence. So you see where, see we get away from the grade and where it levels off. So that's ultimately gonna be the landing spot for that elevated walkway. How many feet is that? Uh, lineal feet? Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll, have to, I'll have to get back to you with that. I, I would guess that's close to 30, 35 feet. Okay. Okay. Well, once again, so that's part that so that is part of the application to the planning board um, for their consideration of you know the site plan special permit. Mm -hmm. Mark, I think you said it before, but I just think it bears repeating that the master plan was reviewed by the planning board, kind of the overall concept uh, and approved by the planning board last year. Um, it's just that as part of that master plan now, the applicant has to come back in for site plan special use permits and others uh, for each of these individual elements. Anybody else have any uh, questions of Mark or uh, the other consultants? Um, I don't. I'm, I'm yeah. good. I looked, yeah, I, the, I looked through the package. It looked very good. Yeah, I looked through the package too. And as usual, it uh, from Mark, um, it, a very thorough and uh, comprehensive package. I appreciate that. We, we don't always have that luxury, but uh, we usually get, we always get it with you. So I, I, I thank you. Um, I don't have any questions about this. I, I, I actually was wondering about when that tree house, I thought you said the tree house was built in place. And I've been on the board for 18 years and I've never, I mean, I, I know I can forget things, but I wouldn't forget that. Um, so uh, I'm glad that mystery is solved. But um, unless uh, anybody has any other um, questions or requests of additional uh, information, are, are there any from any of the board members? But, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm Scott, good. If, if there's one thing I could offer to this board is, you know, I. And so I try to be quick about this. There's, you know, there's a lot of information and history with this. Um, and I try to be, you know, uh, efficient in the information presented. But I'm certainly offering uh, to this board um, if, they, if they wish to have a site visit and, and, and get a visual on this, happy to arrange that, um, um, you know, with, with the board. I'm confident that each and every board member will be out there um and and maybe we'll we'll, we'll arrange that um you know so you we only have to have you out there once but uh, okay I, I assume, have a tour bus. yeah right i i assume um like for example uh, where the uh, uh the new garage is off of uh that 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 small little house that's going to be that's staked out and we'll have an idea of the the footprint and things like that that, that would yes. be my only request just so we have an idea when we go out there and we see the little cottage, we know what the footprint of the, um, uh, you know, the mud room is and, uh, and the three bay garage and, and anything that's new, um, just, just have it staked so we have an idea, that's all. Absolutely, Scott, uh, they, I will, I'll have everything delineated. Okay, um, all right, well, uh, that, that would be my only request is just have a staking of whatever is new Okay. Um, and, and actually, uh, getting back to what Tim Economopoli said, maybe we, we can have an idea of, of um, the the walkway, you know, where it ultimately is going to start. And, Absolutely. In that kind yeah. of stuff, just just sure. to give us an idea. Um, 
So, but anyway, um, I, I, uh, at this time, uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the application and complete as complete and I'll put this on for a public hearing, which I believe again, and Gretchen, she can correct me, is uh, the 16th of February. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Catherine Clark. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, are anybody opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, it's unanimous. All right, so um, we've accepted the application as presented and, and um, we'll uh, arrange with you um, at your convenience um, a site visit uh, on this and it'll be on for a public hearing on uh, February 16th. And as you know, um, the public such as it is, uh, surrounding neighbors um, will have an opportunity to uh, review this application uh, with you at the public hearing and ask questions of you and, and make comments and things like that. So, so uh, I'm sorry, um, I, I have one more question. Sure. Do you mind if I ask that? Not at all. At, at, the, at the end of uh, this massive uh, paperwork here that Mark puts together, which is wonderful, um, there's uh, affidavits from, these are different neighbors within 500 feet. Uh, no, I think those are, those are the uh, uh, authorization forms of uh, allowing, I, I believe it's, it's allowing uh, me and, and, and the other consultants on this Zoom call to represent, um, to represent the owners in the application, Richard. Okay, because there's a different, uh, um, I saw someone uh, from um, Creed, Ankeny, uh, Creed Farm, Oh, Creed Ankeny, I think they said. Yeah, it was some, there was a high, I, I thought it was from the neighbors within 500 feet or something. And uh, I, 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 I wasn't sure, certificate of applicant, the uh, board. So that's why I was uh, looking for clarification on that. And, and if it was, I, uh, I thought that um, Sue Koff, would have been included, but I guess if this is not what this is, then oh, oh so maybe that was, um, uh, if if so, it, it was with my material. So the affidavit of publications in there, an affidavit of um, I, I don't know what they all are. To tell you the truth, no, so, yeah. So so Richard, those, is this... those, those are authorization. Those are authorization forms. That, that allows uh, me and the other consultants to represent ownership for this project. Okay. And, uh, it's no, no, no. and what's the Knollwood address then? That's where... So if, if there's a Knollwood address in there, uh, if you could just send that to me, there must be... Well, you know, if you could bring it that back up, I. You can bring it back up. You can see it's 36 Knollwood, Rhinebeck. I, I hereby reside. Oh no! Oh no! So that's so the uh, the Knollwood. That's that's the location of the attorney uh, representing the owner. That, that's Justin Cole. You know Justin? Oh yes, sure, sure. sure yeah, sure. that's I, so. Just Justin moved from Ryancliff. He he lives yep. in Knollwood. Yeah. What 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 confused me was I saw the Creed, something about Creed in one of them. And anyway, I apologize for going on. Thank you very much. No, not at all. That's what we're here for is to ask questions. If you have questions, this is the time to do it. So, and at the public hearing too. All right. So um, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see you guys um, on uh, February 16th. And in the meantime, we'll arrange. So I think uh, probably uh, all of us will try to make it at one time just to um, make it less onerous on you guys. Appreciate it. And as I said, uh, we'll, we'll have everything staked and delineated for you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Okay. So now we Scott, I'm happy to. Yes, sir. I was say, I'm, I'm happy to set up yes, that. Sir. I'm happy to coordinate setting up the site visit if you'd like. I've done that before. Uh, oh, sure. That's great. That, that's... So I can reach out to all the members and then I'll reach out to Mark and um, work on dates so we can get that. Sounds good. Okay. That'd be great. Thanks. Um, and then just, uh, we have some housekeeping. Um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, recommendation by by Jim and I think it's correct is that this is under secret it's a 
type two action under 617.5C17. Uh, I think that's correct. Um, so I'd make a motion that, um, uh, as far as I know, the planning board hasn't ruled on this. So um, we can uh, you know, make a motion that it's a type two action uh, under that section. So I'd make that motion. Do I have a second? Sure. Also. Second. Yeah. All right, Catherine. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstent Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, and then uh, the referrals, uh, the planning board, uh, obviously. And then uh, Jimmy said the uh, CAB and the WAC, and that's um, because of its proximity to uh, to what? CAB, WAC, um, proximity to the river um, right. within the other WRP. Um, that's that's the WAC. And then yeah. HAPAC, um, historic. We're in the historic district. It's also historic property. Um, okay. So we can refer them to them as well. And they've both seen this before. They've been engaged right. in the planning board uh, yeah. process. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, we have those referrals. And I think that's it, except for assigning the... Um, the resolution to somebody. Um, who would like to take this one? Do we have any takers? I guess I'm up. Are you up? Okay. Yeah. Well, you asked all those questions about the walkway. I did so ask you deserve the it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So Tim, you're 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 it. All right, Jim. Have I missed anything? No, I think that covers it, Scott. Okay, great. All right, so um, that brings us to the public hearings. And um, I think the Barry matter is gonna be a little longer. Um, so I, I, would, I know it's listed first, but I, what I'd like to do is just take uh, Maitland first. Is there somebody here on the Maitland matter? Yes, uh, it's myself, Chris Schmidt um, with Neve Group. Uh, hey, no, Chris. I'm doing well, how are you? Okay. Uh, I. Is there anybody here from the public? It doesn't look like it, but anybody interested in this application for the public hearing? All right, uh, it doesn't look like there's anybody here, but uh, Chris, why don't you take us through this one more time? Sure, so um, Jim, are you gonna pull up? You want me to share my screen? Oh, yeah, sorry. I was oh, that's right. taking notes, it's up for you. <laughs> okay. No problem. So I'll start with just the overall, <clears throat> you know, what we're looking to install here is an 18 by 36 in-ground gunite pool um, with an associated patio, um, some landscaping and the pool perimeter fence. The property is a, currently a pre-existing non-conforming with the existing setbacks of, um, I believe we were corrected on the last meeting of 75 feet um, on the side. Uh, rear yard, which I do have some updated plans, which I, I either could share mine or we could continue to review this. Um, but so the variance that we're looking for is on, on the side of the property here. There is some existing uh, buffer plantings here along the edge um, of the property. The nearest other property is about 300 feet further up Upper Hook Road. Um, you know, the main reason why we chose this location is, is due to the existing septic fields um, and then also the inability to be in front of the house on Upper Hook side and then the extreme topography next to the house as well um, and again being on the road side of the house there. Um, the, the pool area itself is not visible from River Road um, and only slightly visible from Upper Hook as it will be hidden by the existing garage and then some future screening plantings that will be along the upper hook side there. And there, there is one um, possible tree that's gonna be removed um, in the back, which is right behind the garage there. Um, that's a, two trees kind of merged together. So we're, we're looking to take probably one down and that was it. And Chris, did I ask you this the last time around? Is it staked out? So when we go out there and take a look, we'll be able to get an idea of where, where it's gonna be. Sure, it's not currently staked out. Um, I thought we were gonna do a site visit last time between the two meetings. Um, yeah, I typically like to do them, my, this is my personal preference is to do them after the public hearing because okay. a lot, it, sometimes you hear members of the public express concerns and I like to have that information, you know, 
neighbors or other folks, <clears throat> if they have particular concerns, I like to know about that when I go out and do the site visit. So that's why I, I prefer, it can be done at any point in time, but okay. uh, I like to do it after the public hearing in case there is somebody. So, sure. Um, well, but I, I have this resolution and I'm definitely going to be doing the site visit between now and uh, the next meeting. And I'll have a resolution ready for the next meeting, I assure you. Okay, great. Yeah, so no problem. I was just curious. But yeah, I can definitely um, get it staked out. So if you want to go at your leisure or if we wanted to schedule a time to go, um, you know, if you felt it beneficial to have me there when you went, I'm happy and, you know, willing to go. Um, but if not, I'll get it staked out maybe by the end of the week, if not early next week. Okay, I think it's always good to have um, you present um, or somebody there. Um, and then, Jim, do you want to... Uh, make the same um, uh, offer of, of coordinating this or? Well, I, I offered because it's, you know, the whole group, I think for the last one, um, if you okay. want me to help coordinate all site visits, I can certainly do that. I don't want to, you know, it depends on whatever's easiest for everyone. Yeah. If, I'm, if I'm definitely going to go out. Um, I, I mean, I can, I can talk uh, to Chris. I assume there'll be a couple other board members who might want to go out as well. So um, yeah, I'd, all right. I'd like to, I'd like to do go with you on the site visit. Um, okay. Scott, do you want the pool and the fence staked out both? Well, yeah, it if, seems like we if, ask for both. Yes, um, if you if you can stake both out, so we have a, a, an idea of, of uh, the, where it's going to be situated on the property. It's it's very helpful. Yeah, absolutely, certainly. And Chris, yeah. should I contact you? Yes, that'd be best. I'll be the one going out to meet with you and uh, and doing the stake out. So that'd be best, please. Okay, then then I'll um, I'll coordinate with uh, Catherine and and whoever else wants to go out mm -hmm. and and give you a call. I'll but I'll give well. you a, I'll give you a little time to get the thing staked out um, before we we uh, we come and visit. Okay, excellent. Um, no, I, you know I noticed the fence is a uh, is that going to have uh, some type of wire mesh on the one side of it? Yeah, we're going to do wire mesh on the outside to meet the pool code. Um, we wanted to do the paddock style to fit in with the yeah. Yeah, existing surroundings. So, so Tim, Tim, I think it was your question. Uh, from the planning board perspective, um, we always ask the applicants to put a note on the plan to state that the fence will be to state code. Um, yeah. We'd like to see what the material is, certainly if it's on historic property, but we don't necessarily at the planning board level want to say that that is or is not consistent with state code. That's for the building department to, mm -hmm. to ensure when they go out when it's constructed, but we do require that note to be put on the plans. Well, I guess what and, the, and reason, coming to the, the reason for my question is, is, um, is the nice side of the fence going to be facing the neighbors in the back or is it going to be the wire mesh? The mesh will be on the outside as per state requirements. We can't have yeah. it on the inside. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, Jim, we will, we're working on uh, getting all the information together for the planning board as well. So we'll, we'll get that hopefully soon and get that to you with the updates on the plans and everything else as well. Right. Yeah. I just want to make sure the, the board is aware that we do that at the planning level. And this is coming to the planning board for review. Um, typically, you know, when, when fences come in, the, the quote unquote nicer side needs to face the neighbors. Um, but certainly if there are regulations for state code right. for safety, that would, right. that would trump that. So um, that's why we rely on the applicant and the building department to make sure it's done to code. All right, do any uh, questions, concerns uh, about the application? Um, Jim I, I, and Gretchen, I guess is for, for both of you. I, I didn't see that we have gotten any referrals uh, back, any, any comment from any <clears throat> of the uh, folks we referred to yet? No. Okay, I don't we think. still have a little bit of time. Um, I, I also think just in the discussion on the fence, there's quite a line of evergreens between the two properties, isn't there? Like more than even one tree deep. So, yes, there is. And we're going to put the fence, um, you know, right along the edge of the existing lawn, along the trees there. Um, we're not going to be removing any trees. We want to maintain that buffer for privacy as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I think a lot of the evergreens were planted by the other property. So there's a fairly dense row of evergreens, but I don't even know if they can see the fence. I don't think they would be able to from their house. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? 
Okay, not hearing any, I'm gonna make a motion that we uh, close the public hearing. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, that's Richard. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Tim Allenbrook? Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, uh, Chris, the public hearing has been closed. We have 62 days to render a resolution. Uh, on the application, um, I will tell you I will have it ready for the February 16th um, you. meeting. You do not have to be present. Um, you're more than welcome if you have nothing better to do on a Wednesday evening. Um, you can you can join us. Uh, they usually come towards the end of the um, um, agenda. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, uh, if you can stake that stuff out in the next, um, you know, week or so, um, we can have, and then maybe in a couple of weeks, Catherine and I and anybody else um, who wants to join us will come out and uh, and visit with you and, and go through it. It won't take long. Okay, sounds great. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you guys for your time tonight, and uh, we'll see you on the site. Yep, thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. So um, last up here is the uh, Barry application, and I see uh, Shauna is here with us tonight. Um, and um, I, I know I asked this question before, and I think you you, you gave it to us, but I, I can't find it. I'll be very candid with you. Um, were, were there renderings, Jim? Did, were you able to? I, I know I yeah, thought you because I know you watched the the Maitland thing the, the first time around, and I know I thought you supplied us with that. So. Mm -hmm. I did, yeah, after we met the last time. I can pull them up again. I know I sent them to Gretchen, like, so it's actually like right. size. And we did this. Yeah, I, I've got those, Scott. Okay. I, was able, I was able to get those from Gretchen before the meeting. So we're, we're set, I can right. bring those up. So Shauna, why don't you just take us through, I mean, it's a pretty simple application, but just take us through uh, briefly. Is there anybody here for this application? Anybody who is interested in this application? Okay, Shauna, just if you can just take us through briefly, you know, what, um, uh, application is about okay yeah um yeah this is uh, i think a lot less exciting than the other ones this is just a seven by seven hot tub no fence no trains um just a seven by seven we did the site fizz already we're asking for a very <laughs> basically um because it's 18 or 18.5 from the property line um but we did have them submit a letter to the board we did have them come over as well the neighbors and do a site visit their house is about 330 feet from the hot tub, but their property line is right there. Um, so, um, so yes, yeah, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. I'm not great with maths. So yeah, that's, I guess that's kind of it. It's just a seven by seven hot tub. That's all we're requesting, nothing fancy. Um, and I did the renderings. Yeah, I submitted those things. I know you guys had asked that last time. So that was, were more helpful. So I submitted those, so it's a realistic and it's the actual hot tub that we, are, we already purchased it. So at least you can actually see the correct color and the size and the model and everything. Um, okay, yeah. and your neighbors so, are Woody and Colleen? Yeah, and they submitted an email as well and I yep. had Woody come over. Yeah, oh, those yep. are the renderings, thank you. Okay, there we go. Um, but yeah, I sent all, all the stuff I did. I sent everyone a Christmas card with, with their notice so everyone was very nice about it. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. The site visit was helpful because they came out and helped measure and stuff. I'm not sure if they're on the call, but everyone was very nice who came out. Yep. Tim Allenbrook and uh, Richard. Oh, I reckon. Okay. Everyone had, we had our masks on, so it's yeah. harder to tell. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Hi there. It's nicer to see you without our masks. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Um, but yeah, anything else I can provide, we are just like very optimistically excited about this. So anything I can do, I trust me, I will do it right away. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, that's fine. We, we've, we've done the site visit and, and having these couple of renderings is, is, is helpful. And also quite frankly, having um, uh, your neighbor uh, who is gonna be you know, the person affected yeah. uh, endorsing it is, is, is also very helpful as well. That was very nice. Um, yeah. So, um, all right. Um, any other, any questions, concerns? Pretty simple application. Okay. Not hearing anybody uh, having any questions or concerns. I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. Uh, do I have a second? I will second that. Okay. Richard seconds. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? 
All right, um, Shauna, the um, a public hearing has been closed and we have 62 days uh, to render a resolution. However, uh, we do have a draft resolution uh, that uh, Tim did. It's a little unusual to do it, uh, to do a resolution on the same evening that we close the public hearing, but we may be able to do it on, and I, uh, but I do have a couple of questions and uh, this goes to Jim and Gretchen. I, we, I know we had to make a referral uh, to a couple of entities um, on this, um, on this. And I just wanted to make sure, I, I didn't see any uh, referrals from uh, any of the uh, interested parties, the, the planning board, uh, CAB, WAC, and um, uh, the um, historic uh, group. I assume those ref uh, referrals were made out and I believe, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, they have, I think, what, 30 days to respond from the date we make the referral, something like that? Yes. Yes. And I did send out the planning board one. Everyone okay. should have got that. But there was planning no board issue. did respond and no issues. A typical, you know, okay. um, take a look at it from your It's page role, nine. Uh, and the code, no issues on the planning board side. Page nine on the draft. Item number nine, um, Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board, as blah, blah, blah. Um, finding that the requests, requested variances raised no significant planning or environmental concerns. I, I had included that, but I had not included the historic. So somebody will. I have the CAB and WAC. And then. Um... Uh, the HAPAC as being the two entities that this had to be referred to. And I just, I, I just want to make sure that th the time has run for them to respond. If they haven't responded to us and their time to respond has expired, then we can go forward. But if it hasn't, then we can't. So I, I, that, that's, that's my only concern. I just don't want to get into trouble. Yes, so CAB hasn't responded, HAPAC hasn't responded. I know CAB is having a lot of issues with people, so we may not get responses. Um, When's their 30 days up? 30 days, that was on the 15th of December. So it's up. Did you, you refer it on the 15th? Uh, most likely the 16th. Okay. It wouldn't have went out more than a day or two after the meeting, so. Okay. And, and, and Scott, you know, I, can't, I, I can't speak for the HAPAC, obviously, but I do work with them. Uh, this was referred to them because it's in the historic district. Um, right. And typically on applications like this, if it's not a historic property, um, you know, it's well hidden, it's, there's no issues. I would anticipate that that would have been the response, but I obviously can't speak on their behalf. Um, but I just wanted to kind well, of put that out there. Um, has their time expired? I mean, uh, Gretchen, did you... You probably referred the, out to I them on the 16th yeah. as well, something like that. Yeah, when I sent out the referrals, they all go with the same day. Right, so right. The, the 30 days is up is the bottom line. We, we got the planning board um, response and the other two haven't responded within the 30 days. Is that is that accurate? Yes. Okay, then I think we can go forward. Uh, Jim, does that sound right? I, I agree. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, um, then at this point in time, I think I would have uh, Mr. Allenbrook. Uh, well, I guess first, uh, what we uh, technically what we have to do is we have to discuss uh, the application. Uh, I have no quarrel with the application. Um, it, it looks fine to me. Um, it, the, the neighbor is fine with it. It's a simple application. Uh, it seems to make sense, uh, you know, the, the placement of it given the topography and everything else, but I defer to my friends who actually visited the site uh, to comment on that. Catherine? I think, yeah, I think it's a, a very logical and probably about the only place for the hot tub. And uh, it's the least problematic in fact, I don't think it's problematic at all in terms of the overall site and the views from any direction. So I, I have no problem with the application. Yeah, I think it's set back just right where it should be. There should, there's no problem with it. 
I, I, neither of us had any problem with it. It was a good spot. You know, you're looking out into the woods and, you know, probably even uh, uh, when there's leaves on the trees, you probably can't even see Woody's house. That's what Woody said. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it was a good selection, I think. All right. Uh, with um, those comments, uh, Tim, do you want to take us through the resolution? Okay. <clears throat> resolution of the Town of Ryan Bank Zoning Board of Appeals in the matter of an area variance application of Shauna Barry. ZBA case number 1022. Whereas, background, applicant. The applicant is Shauna Barry, referred to hereafter as the applicant. This appeal is from the Town of Rhinebeck Building Inspector's Denial, dated October 20th, 2021. Property involved. This, in, this appeal involves property located at 373 Mill Road in the Town of Rhinebeck, in which bears a tax parcel number 135089-6069-0001. The applicant's property is 5.58 acres in area and is located in the RA10 zoning district. Representation. The applicant is represented before this board by herself. Description of the proposed project. The applicant seeks to install a seven foot by seven foot hot tub within a side yard setback. Area variance required. The applicant requires one area variance related to side yard setback. As required by paragraph 125-27.A.2.B point point of the Town of Rhinebeck Zoning Law, no structure shall be set back from any lot lines less than the greatest of the minimum setback. Forgive me because um, uh, this is printed out at half size for some reason. <laughs> So, uh, it's on screen. Side. I can zoom in if you'd like. Oh yeah, yeah. Would be easier on screen. I can zoom yep. in further if you'd like. No, that's great because I, for some reason, when I printed this out. Okay, so um, okay, it's a long Is sentence there. No structure shall be set back from any lot lines less than the greatest of the minimum setback as determined upon application of the following criteria. 75% of the minimum side setbacks set forth within the district schedule of area and bulk regulations for a principal building in the RA10 zoning district. In this case, the greatest of the minimum setbacks is 75% of the RA 10 side yard setback of 100 feet uh, or resulting in, in a total of 75 feet. Therefore, allowed 75 feet as per above, uh, proposed six foot six from the lot side lot line to the edge of the hot tub. And the variance request as a result is 68 feet, six inches. And I uh, hope you guys all followed that. Yes. Got it. Got okay. It. Secret oh, timeliness. The applicant filled an appeal with his filed an appeal with the board on November 15, 2021, and has paid the requisite fee. The appeal was filed within 60 days of the date of the CEO's decision appealed from, and thus the application is timely as required by paragraph 125-125B of the Town of Rhinebeck Zoning Law. Acceptance of application as complete. On December 15, 2021, this board deemed the application to be complete and accepted it for review by this board. CICRA, after accepting this 
After accepting this appeal, we determined that this matter should be classified as a type two action under the State Environmental Quality Review Act, secret, because the project involves construction, expansion, or placement of minor accessory slash pertinent residential structures, including garages, carports, patios, decks, swimming pools, tennis courts, satellite dishes, fences, barns, storage sheds, other buildings not changing in the land use density. No further review is required pursuant to secret. Item nine, public hearings, scheduled referrals and responses. We scheduled a public hearing for January 19th, 2022 and directed the secretary to provide notice of the public hearing in accordance with the requirements of section 125-125D of the Town of Rhinebeck Zoning Law and to refer the applicant, the application to the following, Dutchess County Planning Department. We determined that this application was not required to be referred to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Economic Development pursuant to paragraph 239-M of the New York State General Municipal Law and one to paragraph 125 dash 125E of the Town of Rhinebeck Zoning Law. Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board, as required by one paragraph 125 125E of the Town of Rhinebeck Zoning Law, this application was referred to the Town Planning Board on December 15, 2022. I think that should be 2021. Yeah, we can fix that. Yeah. Okay, um, the Town Planning Board responded on January 3rd, 2022, finding that the requested variance raised no significant planning or environmental concerns. Site visit. On January 8th, 2022, CBA members Richard Kopsiansky, Catherine Clark, and Timothy Allenberg visited the applicant's property and the surrounding neighborhood to observe firsthand on-site conditions, property characteristics, setting, surrounding environment, and the character of the surrounding neighborhood. The purpose of this site visit was to observe the property and the surrounding areas to inform board members for the upcoming decision. The site visit was conducted solely to gather information and no business or deliberations were conducted during the site visit. Public hearing, a public hearing, which was just an hour ago. Uh, public hearing on this appeal was duly advertised and held on January 19th, 2022. Prior to the public hearing, we received correspondence from the neighbors, Woody and Colleen Deertz at 345 Mill Road stating that the app, that, quote, the application has no impact on us as neighbors and we urge the application to be approved, close quote. The public hearing was closed on January 19, 2022. Findings of fact and conclusions of law, balancing test. In our review of the variance sought, we have considered the benefit to the applicant if the area variance is granted as weighted as weighed against the detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the neighborhood or community by such grant. We determine that the variance requested should be granted because there is no detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the neighborhood or community by the granting of this variance. Consideration of five factors, five factors in the building, in the balancing test. In our review of the variance sought and consideration of the balancing between the benefit to the applicant as weighed against the detriment to the health and safety and welfare of the neighborhood or community, we have considered the five factors required by paragraph 125-124C1 of the Town of Rodbeck Zoning Law as follows. A. If the variance is granted, will it cause an undesirable change in the character 
of the neighborhood or cause a detriment to nearby properties? We feel the answer to this question is no, because the proposed seven foot by seven foot hot tub would be a very small element in the landscape. B, can the benefit sought by the appellant be achieved by some method feasible for the appellant to pr pursue other than an area barriers? We find the answer to this question is no, because the proposed location for the hot tub is optimized for minimum impact. C, is the requested variance, area variance substantial? We find the answer to this question is no, because the hot tub's minimal footprint of 49 square feet Will the proposed variances, excuse me, will the proposed variances have an adverse impact on physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district? We find the answer to this question is no. The proposed hot tub will not adversely impact physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. Is the alleged difficulty self-created? We find the answer to this question is yes, because it is the applicant's choice to install a hot tub. Minimal variance requested. In addition to our review of the five factors and balancing test, we must also determine if this requested variance is the minimum variance necessary and adequate to accomplish what is requested by the applicant and that also preserves and protects the character of the neighborhood and the health, safety, and welfare of the community. We find the answer to this question is yes. The applicant has made a significant effort to locate the hot tub in such a manner as to minimize impact, impacts to trees and topography. Result of the balancing test. Based on our analysis of the five factors discussed above and the consideration of having the minimal variance requested, we find that the balancing test favors granting of the area variance sought. Now, therefore, be it resolved, based on all the facts described above and upon the reasoning described above as follows, section one, the ZBA hereby grants the variance from zoning law, paragraph 125.27.A.2.B, point point finding that the benefit of the applicant outweighs the detriments to the health, safety, and welfare of the neighborhood or community by such a grant. Section two, this grant shall allow construction of an above ground seven foot by seven foot hot tub located wholly within the side yard setback and no less than six foot six inches from the property line. The granting of the variance, section three, the granting of the variance does not above does not absolve the applicant from having to secure any other required permits and or approvals. The proposed structures must be constructed in conformity with the application and plan submitted. The area variances will be null and void unless the proposed construction is commenced within one year of this resolution. Okay, I think that's as far okay. as I can uh, good job. Um, I just have a, a just a couple of nits um, on paragraph one. It's um, it, it, it's the town of Rhinebeck interim zoning enforcement officer. It, Mike Trimble was mm -hmm. the one who did the letter. So I would just change building inspector to interim zoning enforcement officer. Again, it's a nit. Paragraph five. If you go to the one to uh, the third line, Gretchen. Yeah. Can you can you keep track of these? Yes. Yeah, Gretchen's good, yeah. So I, I would just yeah the the interim zoning enforcement officer again knit, and then mm -hmm. on the third line of paragraph five, it's it's uh, of the of the it, they're, they're, it, it's said twice, so just remove one of the of thes. Okay. You see that, Gretchen? Yes. Um, uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. The only other suggestion I kind of had was, um, and I don't know what you think about this, is on a paragraph 13b, is maybe just to add a little bit um, it, 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 to, to, to make clear that this is really given the topography. And, and you guys actually went out there. I did not. And so I don't know if it makes sense or not, just to throw in, just to beef it up a little bit, that this is 
this is the only real area where you could have it given the topography of, uh, of the site. I, I don't know if that makes sense or not. Um, I, I, I'm fine with the way it is, but if, if we wanted to beef it up a little bit, I would, th that would be the only suggestion. No problem. Um, any other comments, concerns? No. no. Questions? No, I, I'm, good. I'm good with it. Yes, yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. Uh, with um, the um, the um, and and as far as um, any other changes, I mean, other than the ones I suggested, that we're we're fine with that. Yes. I think yes. this resolution reads well. All right, um, Richard, or excuse me, uh, Tim, do you want to make a uh, a motion? Sure, I make a motion. Now uh, you make the motion. I, I. Okay, I'll make the motion. I make a motion that we accept the resolution uh, as read with the uh, minor nits uh, that I um, I uh, voiced. Uh, do I um, do I have a second? I'll second. All right, Gretchen, do the roll okay. call, please. Okay, Scott? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Richard? Yes. Tim E? Yes. Tim A? Yes. All right, so the resolution has been uh, granted and um, that'll be, uh, I guess Gretchen, you'll have it available probably what, tomorrow or the next day, something like that? Yeah, either tomorrow or Friday. Okay. So, um, and I think that is all that we have on our agenda. Let me just see, yeah, no old business. Anybody have anything else to bring up? No. No? Thank you all, all very right. much. And thank you, Gretchen. Thank you. So helpful throughout the whole process. So thank you to everyone, but thank you, Gretchen, very much. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Enjoy. Thank you all. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Okay, um, all right. Anybody have anything they want to bring up? Nothing. No? Nothing. All right, well, I'll, um, I'll uh, like I said, um, uh, give uh, Chris a, a, a week or so to get those, um, uh, the fence and the pool staked out. And then I'll, I'll uh, ask folks, you know, what their availability is and maybe we can go out and take a look around um, on, the, on that project, okay? Um, so uh, with that said, uh, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay, thank Jim, thanks. And thank you, everybody. 